it's normal if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist to try and read the signs and figure out how to know if a narcissist is finished with you. I'm going to be discussing this in the video. Hello and welcome back. I hope that you're all doing really well. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how can you tell that the narcissist hasn't moved on? And it probably looks like they have because they're in a new relationship, they've got a new life, you're completely discarded, they're not even thinking about you, but you, how do you know that the narcissist hasn't moved on? And let me tell you, they haven't moved on. How do I know that? I'm gonna be discussing this in the video. Okay, so when you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, you will try to read the signs and figure out how to know if a narcissist is finished with you. You might feel obsessed over the idea, like going back over every conversation or every scenario that took place between both of you, because you're just trying to figure out is this silent treatment or have they actually discarded me? Is this over? Relationships with narcissists have a cycle to them that play out again and again and again, and they draw you in close, and then they begin to verbally abuse you and withdraw. Finally, they will then discard you. And this usually seems to be kind of like the formula of the cycle. But as we know, as we know, within this cycle, it is temporary because they soon return to start this cycle all over again. But with all of their comings and goings, it's natural to think, you know, where are you in this cycle? Or what actually is happening? And when they leave, is this the final time? So narcissists manufacture emotions in us that serve their own interests and slowly teach us to ignore our own needs. They, there are many things that keep us bound to narcissists far longer than they should. So firstly, it can feel as though our lives are on hold, waiting for this conditioning that we have been subjected to over the years, all right? And make no mistake, they have conditioned us to expect it. When the narcissist leaves and then returns, it dysregulates our neurotransmitters in our brain. One such neurotransmitter is dopamine. And the dopamine is a chemical that is responsible for making us feel pleasure sensations, all right, throughout our body. And it drives humans to seek rewards and motivates us to act and live our lives in productive ways. So it's pretty important. It's a pretty important neurotransmitter. But here is the problem. It can get synced up with the narcissistic abuse cycle so that the level of dopamine in the brain drops when we are not in contact with the narcissist. And so what happens is we become, we become embroiled in this kind of addiction cycle. What happens is that when the dopamine drops, we then crave the contact. And this is why we're trying to figure out is this the silent treatment or is this the final discard? Like what's going on? Because our dopamine levels have dropped and this can happen until the passage of time breaks the chemical bond. And this, this my friends, this is part of the trauma bond. And this is why it is very, very important to understand what is going on here. It is the literally the drop of the dopamine levels that we have been conditioned into accepting but also living through all right so the second thing that happens is psychologically there is a consistent tension inside of us okay due to the desiring someone who causes such pain and yet periodically comes back to rescue us from it so this is where the problem exists all right the narcissist has returned and left so many times before that that it feels natural to anticipate it again so it's like waiting for the other penny to drop all right there's also a fear of what comes next when they aren't returning as expected because we don't know who we are anymore without the narcissist in our lives all right or we don't know anymore where we are in this cycle so at least if the cycle continues there is comfort in the familiarity 
all right so the third thing that happens is that the lack of control over what the narcissist is going to do can cause us to feel insecure about our own actions and this is where we learn to not trust ourselves and learn to rely on the narcissist and their wants and needs okay so even if we are the ones to find the strength in leaving we can feel a lack of resolve because we have lost all that control in the past and that we end up not trusting ourselves anymore so we don't trust what's going to happen next we don't trust our judgment we don't trust our thoughts so this is why we're always waiting for the social cues from the narcissist so in short okay they never really let their exes go all right they're merely put their partners on ice they never really leave all right you're on silent treatment okay they leave you spinning wondering what happened without any closure and while they may have moved on to someone new if they see something that reminds them of you they may reach out and see how receptive you are they always have to keep to that kind of web in the background intact you are kind of part of that web all right that covert web like trying to understand what actually is going on here they will watch you make no mistake they watch you they'll keep tabs they know what you're up to even if you haven't heard from them for weeks months maybe even years they watch you they need to know what you're doing they need to know what's going on and because of this i think that they like to think of the final discard on the part of the narcissist is a myth it's a hypothetical idea and I feel like this thought can help you in recovery because it will give you all the answers that you need all right you're in this silent treatment they haven't finished with you the only way that a narcissistic relationship can finish is if you finish it if you make the choice and say no more I don't want to go through this there's really only one way to know when a narcissist is finished with you it's when you decide that you are finished okay you can't control the narcissist or know what they are thinking you can only control yourself they want to think that they have the option all right that they can come back sometime only in their own minds all right they think that they can come back sometime it's important to make yourself difficult to contact it's important to have no contact with the narcissist you need to kind of block all ways of them trying to communicate with you because they will keep coming back they will want to keep communicating with you and you have nothing to gain from this they're not going to give you closure they're not going to explain anything to you the absolute best thing that you can do is to work on ceasing to care once you have stopped caring you've already won the control back into your life and that's the point that's the thing the narcissist can never take from you again no matter what he or she decides to do after that ultimately you decide so guys I really hope that this video helps to explain things a little bit differently for you to understand actually what is going on here and what's happening all right it's all about you actually and the thing is you have all the power you have all the control in this scenario so I hope that this video has helped you if you are going through something like this please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations please see the description box below for further details and if you would like to join a supportive community and maybe work through this please join the journal club again all the details are in the description box thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video goodbye